Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here. Luris has been everywhere in Modern. The Companions have been everywhere in Modern. And as an Infect pilot, part of my job, the way I see it, is looking to see where I can find a place for one of them in Infect. And lo and behold, Luris is actually where I'm going. Now, Luris is, you'll, make, you'll notice, neither green nor blue. So if we would like to play Luris, then we have to splash either black or white or both, and this deck is splashing the former. This is Golgari Infect, Golgari Luris Infect, for modern. So start off, Luris's companion restriction is almost nothing in this deck. Almost. There's something to note here, but during each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with CMC two or less from your graveyard, Great. If you've seen Modern, you already know probably <laughs> in all likelihood where this is going, uh, but the restriction is each permanent card in your starting deck, so your main board, not your sideboard, has converted mana cost two or less. This really only means that one card gets kicked out, and that is Phyrexian Crusader. What are you doing here? We'll, we'll get to you. But remember, the restriction does not apply to the sideboard, so Phyrexian Crusaders being three mana, doesn't matter for this, but we have to find something instead of Crusader, and lo and behold, we do. So, your bread and butter, of course, is Glistener Elf. You're going to try to go turn one Glistener Elf, turn two win. You can play more slowly than that, but a lot of decks are now going to be, because they're playing for that eighth card, now granted, plenty of them are just going to be doing their same game plan, and they just happen to have an eighth card <laughs> in their hand that they can get. Burn being chief among them. Burn has to make absolutely no changes in order to run Luris if it's a Boros Burn list. They do still make changes, but they don't have to make any. But some decks, like Jun, will have to do a few crazy little things. You can't run Kali Toss, for instance, in your main board because Luris is around, and so on. You get the idea. Now, because of that, we are incentivized to try to take out the opponent pretty early on, before they can start grinding out value from Luris. However, there is a, a bit of a problem. You see, they're also going to be running low-to-the-ground spells, because Luris says two or less. I keep harping on Luris, that's not the only one. There are, for example, the Gruul uh, five-color one is seeing play in humans, Yorian is a thing, and Yorian is also five mana. Uh, but I harp on Luris because of how ubiquitous it's become. Uh, in Modern, especially in Legacy, you get the idea. So, if you need to get past your opponent's low-to-the-ground blockers, you don't have Distortion Strike or Slip Through Space or something like that in this list. Instead, you have to rely on your evasion not through Blighted Agent, but through Plague Stinger. Now, it's effectively Blighted Agent, but with flying and not blue, but black. Uh, this isn't strictly worse, but it is usually worse. It can be blocked by flyers, and that can come up, to be sure. Uh, but it also can, in a pinch, block. But yeah, it's just generally worse. You can't run Phyrexian Crusader in the main board, so instead we run Plague Stinger, and the majority of the time, when this comes down on turn two, there still won't be blockers on turn three in the air, so most of the time it just is Blighted Agent. I apologize if you're hearing that in the background, we have a storm going on, so sorry about that. Lightning, thunder, rain. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so then we have uh, Ink Moth Nexus, which is just a land that becomes an infect creature. If you think of Glistener Elf as being the fast one against, say, like combo decks, is generally its role. Plague Stinger, or Blighted Agent, as being the one that gets through lines of creatures, so against aggro decks. Ink Moth Nexus is generally good against control decks because it's the hardest one to remove, generally speaking. Now we have Noble Hierarch. Importantly, Noble Hierarch does not make black mana, so we do have to be careful about how we work with our mana. That doesn't usually matter except for Phyrexian Crusader in the sideboard, and if we would like to use the mana for another card coming up. Uh, now, as for the actual kill, we run four scale up, which could be three, redundant copies are a thing, and two scale ups don't do you any good on that same turn. But you can still follow up scale up with scale up the next turn, so I think it's still worth having four. And it's it's really good. Might of Old Crosa, plus four, plus four. If, if we're casting it, it's probably plus four, plus four. 
Uh, Groundswell is a 4 of. I've run it as a 3 of before. I think that 4 is a good number now because of how quick we have to be. And we run lots of fetch lands. So because Bolt is still a card, being able to hold up a better giant growth on our opponent's turn, fetch Groundswell, is still going to be able to protect us. Uh, I run one copy of Become Immense because it gives us something to do with our graveyard and it's huge. Uh, four vines of vast wood because we need to protect our creatures and it's also plus four plus four this will be the first serious modern infect deck that i've run since blossoming defense came out when i say serious i mean one that i'm actually playing for the sake of winning not just like as a brew or at fnm or whatever but the first serious one that does not run the full four blossoming defense it's only three i said i used to run three groundswell this is where that switch happened to come in I don't, it, you, can, you can run four, that may very well be right. I think that it's more important for us to have that extra ground spell just as a matter of speed. Now, we do also have Seal of Strength, which could be Blossoming Defense. It is a weird giant growth. It's a one mana enchantment giant growth. You can activate it at instant speed, so we're running it because, lo and behold, Luris can get this thing back. <laughs> and so it makes us have a 6-5 lifelink creature every turn, even if we don't have an Infect card. And that can, that can be enough. Also, it's just value. <laughs> so Dismember is our removal in this deck. It could be something like Fatal Push. Dismember generally in Modern is going to be killing more, plus we can cast it off of Ink Moth Nexus. I generally don't like playing Dismember, but in this deck we actually can pay the mana for. It's not always going to be a weird one mana snuff out. So because of that, I am electing to have it. A fatal Push doesn't kill enough in my estimation, and you could run something like Abrupt Decay, but I would rather be more mana efficient. And again, it kills more, generally speaking. Uh, now, of course, because we're running Luris, we're running four Mishra's Bobble, as you do. Three mana, cast Luris, you can immediately get a Bobble back. So even if they try to kill the Luris, you're at least going to be even on card advantage. That's fine. Uh, and it draws us into our combo, if we need to. So it's a zero mana, it's, it's a weird slow Gitaxian probe, but we get to run Luris, so why not? Uh, now, I previously had only two because I had four Nile Spell Bombs, which I think is a little too all-in. Not every deck is going to be Luris or Dredge uh, or getting something out of the graveyard like Thopter Sword. So it's probably not right to have four, but since we are running black, we could very well do so. This one draws us a card immediately, unlike Bobble, which does it at the start of the next upkeep, as I recall. Let's see, beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Okay, and it does it's not your next turn, it's the next turn. Uh, and with Nile Spellbomb, it is effectively two mana in order to do that, but it also gives us something else. It lets us interact with our opponent, we get rid of their yard. And with Luris, we can do this continuously. This could very well, again, end up being a four of and bobble as a two of. I'm not the first person to think of this tech, I'm positive, uh, but if you just expect there to be a lot of Luris, this is something that you can do, and again, you draw the card immediately. Uh, now, I'm also running, obviously, we have the, the two snow, well, it doesn't have to be snow covered, but it, it lets our opponent think that we might have Arkham's Astrolabe, uh, but basic force because Path to Exile is still a card, and sometimes we'll need to fetch a basic so that we preserve our life total. Sometimes. Uh, two overgrown tombs, only two, and then I'm running seven fetch lands. As long as they fetch green, you're fine. It doesn't actually matter the composition, except for cards like Sorcerer, Spyglass, or Pithing Needle, which aren't really a thing right now. So don't worry about it. Don't, don't think too hard about this part. Just use whichever seven you have. Uh, now, if you don't have seven, consider running maybe more Overgrown Tombs, or if you have them, Nurturing Peatland, just as a way to... You can, it makes both your colors, and then you can cycle it, cycle it, to get another card. Get maybe a pump spell or a creature, whatever you need to dig your way out. It's kind of a mana sink. When you have that much mana, if you're making it to that far in the late game, it'll give you another card. Then we have two Pendlehavens. This could be one. I think that two is still correct. All of your creatures that have Infect anyway are one ones. In this deck, you maybe could do one because you're constantly having a 3-2 in hand, and that doesn't benefit from Pendlehaven. 
I would still stick with two if it were me. You also have Dryad Arbor as a way that you can fetch for, say, like Liliana or just a, like a Liliana's Triumph, anything that you want to do like that. Uh, and it also gives you a backup win con. For the same reason that sometimes you can swing with Noble Hierarch and get there, you can do so with Dryad Arbor as well. It lets you potentially, if your hand is otherwise godlike, keep a hand that doesn't have an infect creature, uh, but it maybe has Noble Hierarch fetch land. I don't recommend it, but it's possible, and in a pinch, you can go for the regular damage kill. Dryad Arbor's not as impactful now as it used to be, which is why I'm emphasizing things weirdly when I give this analysis, because Liliana isn't as prevalent of a card as she used to be. Uh, but nevertheless, it is something you can do. Now, and also Dryad Arbor serves as a Planeswalker killer in general. Fetch, and then on your turn, use a pump spell, kill that walker. Great. Now, for the sideboard, uh, one of our cards is Lurus, so we have 14 cards otherwise. I'm running one Maelstrom Pulse as general removal. Remember, these cards are not going to be affected, but even if CMC two or less were imposed, or let me rephrase that, uh, the, the restriction from Lurus doesn't apply to instants and sorceries. So you can run Maelstrom Pulse anyway. You, this could have been in the main board, which is why Become Immense is able to be in. Uh, but there you go. Here are the other two Nile Spell Bombs for Graveyard Dex and for Lurus. Phyrexian Crusader. Now this has a few interesting uses. It is good for Jund. It is good for decks that are running red and white. So like Jeskai being a thing. Uh, but it also is there for Burn. Pro Red means they're not going to be able to remove it. And if this thing sticks and they don't kill you on the next turn, you win the game is generally how that works. They can't stop your Phyrexian Crusader. Even if they had a white card like... Oriok Champion or, or Core Firewalker or something like that, you still can go right on through them. And as popular as Red Deck Wins is right now, as Boros Burn is right now, I think that that's absolutely worth it. Now, it doesn't have Lifelink on its own, so they can still beat you on the next turn, but you still have Lurus in the sideboard, and Lurus is a 3-2, and we have other cards we're getting to in a sec. Now, I have Seal of Primordium as a recursive way to deal with artifacts or enchantments. Again, Lurus is broken. We have four Tarmogoyfs. Now that we're running artifacts, we have five card types in our deck that can go to the graveyard. We have lands, creatures, instant sorceries, artifacts, and that means Tarmogoyf gets better. So this is potentially a 5-6, and because you're running Noble Hierarch in the deck as well, you can win opposing Tarmogoyf Wars, which matters for Jun, for Jun Shadow, uh, for I'm seeing Zoo come back. It matters for decks like those. Zoo's not really a thing, but okay, you know, you can, well, I can dream, I can dream, no. Uh, but Tarmogoyf gets to be better in Infect as a backup card. Generally speaking, Tarmogoyf doesn't get to serve quite as well as some other options because Fatal Push is a card, and that could still be the case here. But I think my impression is that we're seeing less of that, and of course the metagame is evolving quite a bit, so when I start to give sideboard analyses, that may change pretty quickly. I'm sorry about that. I can't help it, I'm afraid. But this gives you, so like, for example, against Burn, you can bring in two Phyrexian Crusader, four Tarmogoyf, and we also have one Weather the Storm as our catch-all against, yes, Storm, obviously. Uh, much, much, <laughs> you win if they try to cast a Grape Shot. Uh, but you also can just use it against Burn. Just, hey, that bolt, that's cute. I'll gain six life. You know, you get the idea. Uh, and then we have two Veil of Summer because it's still that good of a card. Remember, they don't have to try to counter or cause you to discard in order for Veil of Summer to be useful. You can at least serve it as a site. It's one mana cycling if they just cast their companion, for instance. Though, ideally, you'd be able to get a little bit more out of it than that. But, you know, it's, it's a really good card. This thing is banned in a couple formats for a reason. So, there you go. And that's the deck as a running it right now. There is one thing I, I wanted to note, which is I used to have Phyrexian Crusader, or Phyrexian Crusader, oh my goodness, <laughs> I do still have Phyrexian Crusader. I used to have Collective Brutality in here, and this is kind of useful. Uh, it is, well, it is useful. You may notice another exclusion, and that is Thoughtseize, or similarly Inquisition of Kozilek. I don't think that Discard is very good right now. When the opponent is getting to start off with when so many decks are getting to start off with an 8th card in their hand, and it's something that you can't take with hand attack, it loses a good bit of its utility. Now that said, this does still have other uses. You can still get rid of something if they happen to be running a combo deck, for instance. 
you can gain two life, though two life against, say, burn isn't all that relevant. That's less than a lightning bolt, so it may not make any difference. And you get to kill creatures, so it might still be worth it. We also don't really benefit from the discarding except for become immense and uh, Lurus itself. That's really all. So it, I don't think that it quite makes the cut, but feel free to disagree. And I'm sure that there are other options as well. Uh, Abrupt Decay is something you could run, Assassin's Trophy, Fatal Push, more Dismember, something that you could do for removal potentially, Liliana's Triumph. If you'd like to, by all means, go right ahead, knock yourself out. Uh, you could even run some Planeswalkers in the sideboard. That's something that Infect has done for some time. Oko, Missa, uh, and I've tried it in a few other colors. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye!